Okay, this will be a very simple house project using Revit architecture for a high school civil engineering and architecture course. Start by coming up here to the upper left, select new, select architectural template, hit OK and give that a minute to load. This is my main drawing surface. Notice I also have a project browser on the left and something called a properties dialog box on the right. You need to make sure you have both of these. They might be both on one side, uh, stacked one on top of the other. They might be uh, together in, in one box with two tabs that allow you to toggle back and forth. If you don't have these, come up here to view and over here to user interface and you can check the appropriate box. Let's go back to the architecture tab. Let's go to south elevations and double click. I'm going to change the name of this one. So this will be level one finished floor. I'm going to call that one top plate, which is the top of my wall. And I want my walls to be eight feet tall. So type an eight and hit enter. Now I'm going to save my project. Okay, now come to Floor Plan, Level 1, Finished Floor, and double click. Go up here and select the Wall tool, the Wall Architectural tool. Come over here. I'm using a basic wall. You have other choices. And as you get further into Revit, Later on in the class, we will learn how to build a custom wall system, but for now, we'll just use this basic wall. Under location line, use core center line. The base constraint, which means the bottom of the wall, should be set to level one finished floor. And the top constraint, which is the top of the wall, needs to be set to top plate. As soon as I changed that, the height of the wall then became eight feet, which is what I want in this case. Now come back out here. You notice that is now changed to eight feet. Uh, check this chain option, which makes placing the walls a little bit easier. They chain together. We don't need to start uh, each time with a new wall. and now start placing the walls. I put my cursor there. I click once on the left mouse button and come across. Type in 30, hit enter. Do not click the left mouse button, just keep going. Come down like that, type 30 again. I still have not clicked my left mouse button because the chain box is checked. So just come over here, now click, and then come up here and click again. Come over here, hit the modify button. Now select wall again, and I'm going to place a couple interior walls now. 
come over to the properties box select interior four and seven eighths just a basic interior wall double check the constraints make sure the base and the top are set correctly and the wall height is eight feet center the wall there click once I'm gonna come down to about right there click again and head over there and join it up with that wall like that come up here click modify to lift my pencil off the paper now come up here and click on this home icon and that shows you what our building looks like this object is called a view cube and you can rotate the object by holding your left mouse button down while you grab the view cube and you can always return to that home view by clicking on this home icon. Now this is a good time to save your work so hit control S. Now we're ready to place the doors and windows. So select the door tool. As you can see we don't have very many door options at this point. So double click on load family. Make sure it says U.S. Imperial, which just means it's going to be in feet and inches. Double click on doors. And you see a preview show up over here. So you can tell what each one of these is. I'm going to select that one. And then hold down my control key and also select that one. Click on open and that will load those door types into the project. I'm going to select the 72 inch wide by 82 inch high double French door. If you place the door there, they swing into the building. If you place them there, they swing outside. So I'm going to place the front doors like that and center them along the front wall. Click once. I'm going to rename this and hit the Enter key. Now I'm going to place a back door and I want to use the 36 inch wide by 80 inch high. You can change the direction of door swing by using the space bar on your keyboard like this. So I want to place that door like that and one more door right there. Again you can change from a left hand door to a right hand door by using the space bar like that. So I'm going to click right there. Now hit modify. Now select window and as you can see I'm not given very many choices on windows so double click on load family again this time select Windows and I want to import that window type right there into the project so click on open now that window comes into the project I'm going to choose that one and I'm going to click on edit type because I want to make the window wider Now the width of this window is 3 feet and I'm going to change that to 6 feet by typing 6-0 and 
and then hitting enter. The height is four feet, which is fine. The default cell height seems a little high to me, and I'm going to make it two feet, three inches, and click enter. Everything else here seems about right. There are other properties down below that you will learn how to use later on. I want to rename this 72 by 48. In other words, 72 inches wide by 48 inches high. Click on OK, Apply, and OK. For some reason, my sill height is still listed at 3 feet. So I'm going to change that to 2 feet, 3 inches. I'm going to put one window here. If I place it there, the window will be along the inside surface of the wall. And if I place it there, it will be on the outside surface of the wall. I'm going to space this window 5 feet from the corner. Just click on it once. I'm going to rename that. I'll put one right about there. And one more right here in this corner. And I can adjust this distance simply by clicking on it and then typing in whatever dimension I want there. Click on Modify. I have all my windows and doors placed. Come up here and click on this Home icon. This is called a View Cube and you can rotate your project by holding down the left mouse button and moving this view cube around. There's our house so far. Looks pretty good. And the next thing we're going to do is place the roof. Okay, now we need to build our roof structure. Double click on floor plan level 1. Click on the roof by footprint tool. Say yes to this. In other words, it's asking uh, where we want to place the roof and we want to place it on the top plate in other words the top of the walls so click yes to that now Revit is asking me to define the boundary of the roof structure first I want to change a couple things I want an overhang of 1 foot 6 inches and come over here to the properties dialog box yes a basic roof generic 12 inch is fine for this project base level top plate yes rafter cut this is fine for now and so as I hover over this wall it's asking me, do I want the boundary of the roof to be inside the wall 
or outside of the wall. And I want it to be like that. So I'm going to click there. And then I'm going to come around. And I'm going to come around the building and select all four walls. The slope of the roof seems too steep to me, so I'm going to use a 5 and 12 slope. Slope is just rise over run. It's just a measure of the steepness of the roof. So now I have the boundary of the roof, the roof line, and I have the slope of the roof. Click on this green check to finish the roof. To see what it looks like now, click on this home icon. And that looks pretty good. Now let's say your client wanted a different roof line. Let's say they wanted a gable down at this end of the building. Just select the roof, click on Edit Footprint, This might be easier in the floor plan view. And let's say they wanted a gable roof end down at this end of the building. Just select that edge and uncheck this box, define slope, like that. Now finish the roof. Now look at it by clicking on this home icon. And now we have a gable end down at that end. We still have a gap where the wall comes up. That's easy to fix. Just select on the wall, attach top to base, and then select the roof. So it's very easy to change the style of roof. Now I'm going to go back to the roof we had and click on the green check again. Now I want to add some furniture. Go to floor plan view. So click on component. Click on load family. Furniture. And I want that one right there. So click open. I want the king size. And just set it right there. Now I want a desk. So load family again. I'm guessing it's under tables. Yes, right there. And I'm also going to want a dining table. And we're going to need a coffee table as well. So I'm going to select all three of those, click on open, and give that a minute to load into the project. I'll use that desk right there. Now use the space bar on your keyboard to rotate it and I'm going to place it right there. Next I want the 60 inch round dining table 
I'm going to put that right there. And I need a coffee table, probably that one right there. And again, use the space bar to rotate it around. Now click on Modify. And this is a good time to save the project anyway, so I'm glad this window popped up. Component, Load Family, again, Furniture. Let's try to find a sofa. Let's use that one right there. Open. Select the 84 inch. I'm going to put that one right there. And I'll put the smaller one there. We, we can always fine tune that later. Let's try to find a TV, flat screen, that looks good. Click open. And I'm going to select the largest one. And since I don't want it sitting on the floor, I'm going to try to position the flat screen three feet up from the floor and I'll put it on the wall right there. So let's hit modify, save your work again by hitting control S and let's see what we have so far. Come down here and select wireframe view So we can see the bedroom furniture, the TV is three feet off the floor. So that's good. We've got our couch, left seat table, and our dining table. And so everything looks good so far. Okay, now that I have the house furnished, I want to show you how to add some color to the exterior. So far we've looked at the wireframe view like this and the hidden line view. And by the way, I was rotating the object right there by using the shift key on my keyboard together with my right button on my mouse. It's a very easy way to move the object around. Let's add some color and texture to the roof, for example. So just select the roof like that. Come over here and click on Edit Type. Under Structure, click on Edit. Now, I added wood shakes to the roof just a few minutes ago. Let me show you how I did that. There are several material libraries within Revit. I'm using the one called Autodesk Materials. And I simply double clicked on Wood Shake Make sure you check this box that says Use Render Appearance and apply that. Apply, OK. And a few minutes ago I did a similar thing to the walls. So 
if you just simply position your mouse on one wall and click on your tab key it will soft select all four exterior walls and then left click your mouse and that will in effect uh, select all of the walls all at once and just do the same thing here edit yours might not say stone there I I changed this a few minutes ago to a nice masonry stone again I checked this box that says use render appearance here are your choices the stone option is right there there's also stucco and a whole bunch of other options in fact In fact, I think I'll just select regular siding instead. It looks like that. a little bit lighter color. Check the box that says use render appearance. Apply. OK. So back your way out of all those windows. And let's see what this looks like. So come down here and click on realistic okay that's what it looks like now you may not like those colors and materials but at least that shows you how to go in and change those okay I want to do one last thing with this project click on floor plan level 1 Go to the View tab, click on Section, and let's place a section view just like that. Click on this squiggly line in the middle that separates it. Pull these out of the way so they clean up the drawing and come over here and if it doesn't have a name just give it a name I'm calling this section 1 click on modify and now under the sections view if we expand that there's something called section 1 so now we have a way of looking at the interior I go back to the floor plan level 1 and under the view tab there is something called camera now this is a pretty cool feature just place the camera there and drag it over about there and click and now we can look through a camera let's put this on realistic and now we can use the view cube to rotate the camera or I can hold down the shift key and use the mouse right button basically to look around the inside of the building so this is a pretty nice feature click on modify and the camera view now will show up under 3D views and it's being called 3D view 1. You can change the name of that if you want over here. Okay, well that is the end of this phase of the project. I wanted to try to keep this tutorial right around 30 minutes and we will cover kitchen cabinets and floors and interior walls and foundations uh, later on this year in the course and with future videos.